I think as a men's rights activist, you are constantly being silenced. Our boys are flaming out Feminist academically. Feminist principles and messages. Society as a whole has an issue listening to men's issues because it makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't really like to hear about men being vulnerable. My name is Alvaro Alvarez. I'm in Scotland. I'm on my way to meet Philip. Philip lives in the very northernmost top of Scotland. I will follow Philip all the way to Chicago, where he's attending the International Conference on Men's Issues, a summit of men, and women actually, who think that men are the ones disadvantaged in modern society. They are part of the Manosphere, a loosely connected network of different groups, from the men fighting for fathers' rights, to pickup artists, to those who don't want anything to do with women ever again. My name is Philip, uh, Philip Tanzer. I'm originally from Germany. I moved to Scotland seven and a half years ago. In a very stormy, cold winter, me and a friend of mine from the military, we came to the Northern Highlands, uh, hitchhiking and wild camping. And I came across Durness and I was like, that's as far away from civilization as you can get without actually leaving the mainland. Um, and it just felt right to me. I work as a hairdresser, massage therapist. Um, I'm an artist and sell my art. As a man growing up, knowing that I liked men, I constantly had to question my position in life, my masculinity. For a man at the moment, I think it feels like what, whatever we do is not enough or is wrong. It would be good if we could look at the positive aspects and the negative aspects, both of women and men, in a balanced way. Well, building a house was always incredibly important for me. In Germany, we have the saying that to be a real man, you have to plant a tree, build a house, and have a child. I grew up in Germany, in the south of Germany, and uh, my father was a dentist. My mom, she ran a um, company, like an in import-export company. And my mom was actually quite, af was a little bit afraid that I would grow up to be too normal. <laughs> So she bought me a heavy metal t-shirt and she gave me one of her like old leather trousers. I was part of the gothic scene, so I was wearing black makeup quite often and feather boas and spiky um, collars and stuff like that. So that was me in a beautiful um, silver glitter dress with a um, head dress that I made myself as well. I'm pretty sure RuPaul uh, would be very proud of me. <laughs> and that was actually my goodbye party from the military. I was in the military for three years and in the military I noticed for the first time real problems in society when it came to men. So almost all my comrades from the military uh, that I was close to, they lost their children in custody battles and it really destroyed them, some of them emotionally. So this is my little art gallery slash hairdressing studio slash massage therapy um, slash political debate um, <laughs> podium. I think girls get a lot of support in society right now, like girl power and you can do it and all that and I think that's great. But because I see that I think boys don't get the same attention as girls at the moment, I really like to show them what they can do, that they could become an artist. Yeah, just inspire them. There's a narrative of like women being oppressed. Mm -hmm. 
in general in history. Do, mm. do you agree with that narrative or do you disagree with that? I think that women were oppressed in situations and I think that men were oppressed in situations. Hi there, no, come in, have a look around. <laughs> Just ignore the fact that we are having an interview here. But what about in terms of, for example, rights? Rights to vote? Rights to own property? So rights in, to choose their profession? So the right to vote came, that I think is in America, with the duty to serve the country. So um, going to the military and you could question, should everybody then have the same responsibilities and and yeah. and give the um just a second um excuse me just a second just a second excuse me um uh just challenge me for a second no i'm really not interested but but you clearly had a reaction so you were interested yeah, but I didn't, I'm, I'm actually anyway. okay cheers bye does it happen often to you? It only happens when I can't interact with the person. So right now, sh I wasn't talking to her. She was just listening. And uh, when people come into a conversation, stuff like that sometimes happens. I could see where Philip was coming from but I had also heard about misogyny and sexism inside the manosphere and how there was a dark side to it all. Philip has regular conversations on Twitter with someone with a different take on men's issues, Graham Golden, a former police officer who now focuses on violence prevention. So I arranged for both to have a Skype chat. So I met Graham on Twitter. I saw that he was invested in helping uh, boys and young men. It became cl quite clear that we had the same interests in helping men, but we have slightly different approaches. Even though he works with men, Graham is definitely not a men's rights activist. Oh. Hi, Graham. Hi. Good to see you. Phil, am I calling you Phil? Do you call me Phil, yeah. Logan is my porn name. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm gonna keep my clothes on, I promise. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, Philip was an award-winning gay porn actor who went by the name of Logan McCree. But more on that later. Very, very good. Quite excited about uh, going to Chicago. I can't believe we're going to Chicago. You're excited? I'm very, very excited. I'm, I mean, I'm excited about the conference, but I'm also excited about going to Chicago. And I'm excited about being on the plane. I, I, I love traveling, so. What's your, what's, your, what's your purpose of going to Chicago? What's, what, do you, what are you thinking? I joined the men's rights movement about, I would say, like one and a half years ago. I came across a video by Girl Rights What? Um, her name is Karen Strawn, one of the most famous men's rights activists. And I'm like, oh my God, that's spot on. And from there, you start going down the rabbit hole, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> you become a men's rights activist. This is Philip's second time going to the conference. He was in the one celebrated in London in 2018. Am I a men's rights activist? Yeah, damn right, I suppose mm -hmm. I am. I'm, I'm looking for, for, for better outcomes for boys. Um, but there's a perception, um, and it's a perception that I've probably had in the past that about, you know, I, I don't speak to men's rights activists because you know, they're, they're, they're sinister, they're anti-women, they're anti-feminist, and, and some people say that they're, they're doing nothing for men, and that's, that's the perception. People take the struggles of women very seriously, and that is wonderful, and that is great, and they should, but it's easy for other people to be forgotten. I don't see mm -hmm. a hatred towards men I see a frustration and, yeah, you know, uh, a dislike of the abusing men. It's a frustration that all these decades of work and we're still facing these issues. And I, and I think I'd like to see that coming out from the main race. Listen, have a great time. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'm, I'm sure you'll hear about it. Yeah,
So I used to be German Mr. Leather. I was the official representative of the German leather and fetish community. All the winners of all the competitions all over the world, they had a big competition in Chicago. I have to say that I'm not a huge fan of porn because of the way that sexuality is portrayed. But I thought that if I was working in porn, maybe I could bring something into that business that it's lacking um, some emotion, some, something personal. These careers are very short, so I was only in the porn for three years. My plan of bringing something positive to the porn industry, I would say overall failed because it's a big industry and you can only do so much. Uh, this time it's a very different kind of men's uh, convention. So I think at this men's convention people are gonna wear more clothes and there's gonna be more talking, less action. So we um, just did the check-in and yeah, the conference is gonna start in I think 20 minutes. Very excited. Men's rights activists focus on issues like family law, parenting or circumcision, and in things like education or health institutions, which they say are biased towards women's needs. While some complaints seem legitimate, they have also been labeled as both misogynistic and hateful by parts of the media and some advocacy groups. Everything I hear, I always try to say, ah, oh, is that true or is that just a theory? I was still a bit confused about the whole movement, so I was looking forward to try to understand what was it all about. To get a better perspective, I was also in touch with someone who has a critical approach towards the manosphere as a whole. My name is Tracy Farrell, and I work with uh, the Social Data Science Research Group at the Knowledge Media Institute of the Open University. Tracy Farrell has studied sexist attitudes online. And what we did was we tried to see if we could define different types of misogynistic behavior. So we broke it down into some smaller areas like belittling women. And then we added some categories that we saw more recently emerging. Um, one of them was this idea of this uh, stoicism. This is just the way that women are. And then in addition to that, um, something which we called flipping the narrative which was presenting the idea that actually women hold most of the political and personal power, and that it is men who are actually subjugated by feminism. One thing that men really crave is respect, and it's not necessarily coming from a place of entitlement or ego, it's coming from a place of need. I'm a relationship and dating coach, and also the author of Make Love Great Again. Feminist principles and messages kept saying, you know, men, be softer, be less toxic. But women, there's toxic feminism too and toxic femininity. You know, the whole toxic masculinity concept is just uh, a made up term from feminists to put the scapegoat on men. For me, it's an unhealthy version of of, of a behavior that can also come in a healthy version. I think uh, all of us as men need, um, need a little extra representation on our side as well. Feminism comes from a woman's need to procure resources for herself. I think it's always been um, a rather greedy movement. By the end of my first day at the conference, even though I heard men talk about the problems they felt they were facing, it seemed that the focus was on finding someone to blame for this apparent crisis of masculinity. I asked Philip about it. I'm hearing a lot of blame into kind of like feminism and the left. Absolutely, and I would say rightfully so. Some of the problems that we have now is a collision between the traditional roles and um, the roles that the left wants to see. So there's already a lot of really great scholarship on the Manosphere um, that demonstrates that there's a lot of different types of groups that tend to be lumped in inside of it. So I don't think it's a place that's only full of misogynistic people, but I do think it's a place where it might be a little bit um, easier to have a misogynistic opinion and to vocalize it. I also met people who seem to be working on valid issues, like equal custody for men. Increasingly, fathers are more and more involved with their kids, and increasingly, they are fighting for equal custody. 
And those stereotypes need to be broken down because there's no reason why fathers shouldn't have at least a close to fair share. But then I would hear things like this that would go against everything that I knew about the issue. By social science standards, it's it just undeniable that males are more likely the victims of domestic violence. Males are more likely the victims of domestic violence. This was very strange news to me. So I wanted to share with Philip different stats. Can I read you something different? Of course. So I have here figures of um, the Office for National Statistics, an estimated 7.9% of women and 4.2% of men experienced domestic abuse in the last year. This means almost twice percent of women experience domestic abuse than men. Do you think these figures are not correct? I think that similar to the studies that were just presented, you have to look into these studies and what, um, how this study was concluded. Uh, but you, you don't, when, if you read this, you don't yeah. believe this. Did I say that? No, I'm asking you, it's <laughs> a question. I do not believe this statistic, and I don't believe the statistics that I heard just now. So now we're gonna listen to uh, Carl Benjamin, one of the speakers that I'm most looking forward to. Um, I had the pleasure in speaking to him in the last couple of days, and really, really nice guy. What Philip considers to be a nice guy, for others is someone from the far right and an extremist who has even joked publicly about raping an MP. We don't owe anyone a particular style or culture. Um, they're doing nothing illegal. They can tell the jokes they want to tell. They're free to do that. And if the feminist movement doesn't like it, well, the feminist movement can go run and jump off a bridge. I don't care. If the attempt is activism, I'm not sure if this is the most um effective way of going about it because unfortunately uh, what people tend to focus on is the vitriol inside of these groups um, and largely uh, a lot of the what, what could be considered legitimate issues inside of that um, get overlooked. By my last day at the conference, even though I had seen legitimate issues, I could understand the concern about the overall approach. I am uh, Daniel, I am from Munich in Germany. My name is Matthew Kuntz, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I'm mostly interested in, in the issues men have at the moment, because I think men are the ones under attack. There's uh, two major issues that come to my mind, um, one being uh, male reproductive rights. The other issue that I find very troubling is uh, genital cutting for boys in the U.S. There's a lot of women that you should actually feel pity for. They were hurt and they need help, but the help they get actually, they are being radicalized. Some people would kind of like argue that this is a place where people would, would potentially feel radicalized. If someone gets radicalized, it's not through the men's rights movement, but you know, the hostility that he faces from general society at the moment. There's always a chance for an echo chamber when you're working online and li listening to people that you agree with all the time. A lot of men are going through a grieving process and it's okay if they're in a, an extra echo chamber for a short period of time. Uh, I always encourage people to go out and talk to friends and family and also listen to other ideas so that they don't get stuck in that kind of angry mindset, that grievance mindset for too, too long. So I, I was asked um, by one of the um, attendees of the, of the conference uh, if he could interview me and it's a project where he's wearing a costume of a historical character and he interviews the people in, as this character. The character was Thomas Paine, an English-American 18th century revolutionary, and the conversation quickly revolved around judging or not judging. The point isn't to tell you don't judge, because judging will happen. The most extreme situation in my life where I didn't judge was uh, my mother was shot by her second husband, and he shot himself. I'm judging right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. So would I you judge. like to share the circumstances, so, or...? Um... My mother, she 
lived for three years with her second husband in South Africa. But there was a horrific um, moment of domestic violence where he beat her really badly and she ran away and she knew she had to leave him. She had already booked her flight to come back to Germany and my brother and me, we were talking on the phone with my mom and during this conversation I heard her talking to somebody in the background and she said, oh, can you please leave the room? I'm talking to my boys. And then I heard how she was uh, hit and my brother took the telephone and my brother heard how she, well, he, he heard three shots. And then the telephone was put on the hook. Yeah, after half an hour, we got the news that both my mom and her second husband were dead. So he shot her and then himself. If some people had this uh, experience, they would have maybe gone the, the way of like hating men. Yes, of course I agree and I can understand that people due to negative experiences uh, become angry, but how does, how does that help anybody? This anger should never inform your action. Your hope and love should inform your action. I just arrived here in Edinburgh at Waverley uh, Station and I'm gonna meet Graham. Uh, we sometimes agree on things, sometimes we disagree, and we meet for the first time. Some of their Twitter encounters have been a bit heated, so I was wondering if these two visions of masculinity were going to find any common ground. Just now, masculinity is being defined by the some men. You know, we, we hear this phrase, toxic masculinity, which I detest, I don't like that phrase. But until we see more, 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 more men standing up to these types of issues and taking responsibility on these issues, I think we're still going to be, find ourselves being judged. That, that's the ultimate that's, goal. That's where I drastically disagree. And when I started joining the men's rights movement, I criticized them for, why do you constantly fight against feminists and certain organizations? And then I realized that they really are part of the problem because they perpetuate a narrative that keeps men from getting help. Could, could, could we all be doing better? Of course we could be doing better, there's no doubt about that. And there's, there's good evidence now that our boys are flaming out academically in relationships and sexually. So we need to go into it and, and, and start a narrative that fixes that rather than a narrative that just... Uh, you know, if you want to, if, if that's what, how your focus is going to be, is about challenging the narrative that you're seeing, and stuff, that you know, I'm not going to say to you, don't don't do that. That, that I don't that, want that, to that, do that. that, that that's, to, to, that's to make your, that clear, I don't your, want to. That's what I don't like about some aspects of of the men's rights activists, the men's rights movements, is just it's just a constant fighting back. I would say 90% of the people that are at this conference are in one way or the other broken. How can we help? these 90% of people at these conferences who are struggling. Mm. We often say, hurt people hurt people. Not always. Not always. Hurt people help people. Mm. That's yeah. my viewpoint. Yeah. Graham and Philip seem to have a thing in common. They both believe that something transformative is going on with men. But perhaps they'd have to agree to disagree on what to do about it. <laughs> 